Given that October is National Work and Family Month, I'd like to take the opportunity to discuss an issue that's become increasingly important to working families, and that's the need for workplace flexibility. Yesterday, my colleague, Senator Ayotte, and I introduced the Family Friendly and Workplace Flexibility Act of 2013, which we hope will provide American workers with the flexible work arrangements they need. Countless Americans have become increasingly familiar over the past several years with the same reality, more and more to do with less and less time to do it. And while Congress can't legislate another hour in the day, we can help working Americans better balance the demands of work and family. The Family Friendly and Workplace Flexibility Act is a common sense measure Congress can take to help alleviate that burden for millions of families by providing greater flexibility in managing their time. We all know working moms who are stretched between a job and supporting her kids, and baby boomers with elderly parents who require care and attention. A 2010 study conducted by the White House uh, Council on Economic Advisors found that work flexibility programs can, quote, reduce turnover and improve recruitment, increase the productivity of an employer's workforce, and are associated with improved employee health and decreased absenteeism. Another study conducted by the Society for Human Resource Managers found that women's responsibilities have increased at work and men's responsibilities have increased at home, resulting in 60% of wage and salaried employees feeling they don't have enough time to spend with their loved ones. The American workplace has evolved dramatically since the industrial workplace of the post-Depression era. Yet the labor laws written during this time period are still in place today. And the makeup of our workforce has also changed dramatically. Today, 60% of working households have two working parents. 66% of single moms and 79% of single dads work as well. American workers have had to adapt to keep pace with this changing environment. So should our laws. Instead of sticking with an antiquated labor law, I believe we need to update the Fair Labor Standards Act to actually meet the changing needs of workers. That's why I'm introducing the Family Friendly and Workplace Flexibility Act. This bill will allow flexible workplace arrangements such as compensatory time and flexible credit hour agreements, which are currently available to employees working for the federal government Federal employees already have this. Allow that to be extended to businesses regulated by the Fair Labor Standards Act. Currently, the FLSA prohibits employers from offering compensatory time or comp time to their hourly employees. This bill would amend the FLSA to allow private employers to offer comp time to employees at a rate of one and a half hours for every hour of overtime work. And I should add that this would be a completely voluntary process. An employee can still choose to receive monetary payments as their overtime compensation. This bill simply allows the option for employees to choose paid time off over work instead. There is no need for Washington to stand in the way of families earning the time that they need. This bill also institutes a flexible credit hour program under which the employer and employee can enter into agreements that allow the employee to work excess hours beyond the typical number of hours he or she is typically required to work in order to recruit, uh, accrue hours to be taken off at a later time. This option is for employees who do not get the opportunity to work overtime, but still want a way to build up hours to use as paid leave. Like comp time, this program is voluntary and may not affect collective bargaining agreements that are in place. Under this legislation, employers would not be mandated to offer flexible workplace arrangements, just as employees are not mandated to choose their benefits rather than direct compensation for overtime work. 
Both parties are free to choose what works best for them. Now I'd like to take a moment to focus on some of the protections in the bill. Under this bill, an employee may accrue up to 160 hours of comp time per year. At any point in the year, a participating employee may request to revert back to receiving traditional overtime compensation in exchange for their accrued comp time, essentially cashing out their banked time. Further, the bill also requires employers to provide monetary payment at the end of the year for any unused comp or flex time. I've also included a provision that safeguards unpaid comp and flex time in the case of bankruptcy. Thus, the bill takes steps to protect against any potential for lost wages in these kinds of circumstances. So, Mr. President, if anyone understands the benefits of comp time, it's our public employees. That's because flexible work arrangements have been available to federal employees since back in 1978. And if federal law already provides these beneficial workplace arrangements to federal and state workers, why shouldn't we make them available to all employees? Public employees enjoy these arrangements very much, so much so that the unions representing them frequently fight for comp time arrangements when ne negotiating collective bargaining agreements. A very important thing to note about this legislation is that it doesn't do anything to alter the 40-hour work week. Let me repeat that. This bill in no way alters a 40-hour work week or how overtime is calculated. <clears throat> Another way in which the Family Friendly and Workplace Flexibility Act protects employees is by prohibiting employers from coercing employees into accepting or rejecting comp, comp or flex time arrangements. Mr. President, when we look at today's modern workplace, we see some companies like Dell, Bank of America, and GE that already provide flexible workplace arrangements to their salaried employees who are not subject to the rules under FLSA. Perhaps it's no coincidence that workplaces like these are also among the highest ranked companies at which to work. Now is the time to allow private companies to provide the benefits of flexible arrangements like comp time to their non-exempt workers as well. After all, it's not just workers at some places of employment who are parents or family members who need to be able to take time off to attend a function for their child's school, see a son or daughter's sporting event, or care for an aging parent. It's workers at all places of employment. A report by the White House Council of Economic Advisors shows that nearly a third of all American workers consider work-life balance and flexibility to be the most important factor in considering job offers. Let me say that again. Nearly a third of all American workers consider work-life balance and flexibility to be the most important factor in considering job offers. It also shows that 66 percent of human resource managers cite family-supported policies and flexible hours as the single most important factor in attracting and retaining employees. These numbers are pretty telling. Mr. President, I'm pleased that the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce has endorsed this legislation. I also want to thank my friend Congresswoman Martha Roby for her leadership and dedication in advancing this cause over in the House. She introduced a bill to accomplish similar ends as the Family Friendly and Workplace, Workplace Flexibility Act and actually saw her bill to passage. Now it's time for the Senate to act. The effort to provide greater flexibility and support for families in the workplace is one I've long supported. I've previously supported legislation allowing flexible workplace arrangements. This is the fifth time I've sponsored legislation to establish comp time, and I'm proud to continue that fight today. I consider myself very fortunate to be joined by Senator Ayotte in this effort. I suspect her predecessor, Senator Judd Gregg, would be proud to see her leadership on this issue as well. Senator Gregg was a champion for flexible work arrangements throughout his entire Senate career. And I was thankful to work with him on the issue in the past and gratified to work with Senator Ayotte on this issue moving forward. Also, Senator Lee yesterday introduced a similar, introduced a similar measure that seeks to provide comp time for American workers. Senator Lee is helping with the effort for conservatives to find out-of-box solutions to the challenges Americans face today. 
I applaud Senator Lee for his commitment to this effort and look forward to working with him on this issue in the future. So, Mr. President, in closing, I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this common sense bill because it's the right thing to do for working families.